highest paying fans. So far, we've looked at how to build services that expose information to clients with GraphQL, but we haven't looked at clients per se. We've looked at using the GraphQL graphical console to manipulate the GraphQL data uh, from the browser. We've looked at using the amazing uh, RSC client to talk to the RSocket GraphQL endpoint as well. But we've done all of this at a high level uh, or a low level. First, with a user interface that's not really a programmatic client or uh, with a protocol specific client that focuses too much on the low level transport protocol and not really at the level of the GraphQL semantics themselves in terms of uh, HTTP or RSocket. So in this video, we're going to look at clients. In the next video, we'll look at testing because the two I think are orthogonal. But for now, let's talk to Spring for GraphQL lead Rossum Steinchef about some of the uh, design decisions motivating the way that we build clients for GraphQL. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we have client support uh, for the 1.0 release uh, because we had already identified testing as uh, key uh, for the 1.0 release and testing is very closely related to clients. Uh, they're, they're both kind of clients um, except um, they have slightly different perspective on how they handle the, the response. Um, and the challenge with uh, GraphQL is that it can run over different transports. And this is why um, it makes it a little more interesting how to design um, a, a client uh, for that. Um, what we have done, um, and I know that a lot of times um, um, the, the usual perspective will be with GraphQL over HTTP, which is request oriented. Each GraphQL request maps nicely to an HTTP request um, and response. Um, but with WebSocket and RSocket, those are much more connection oriented protocols. And uh, you establish the connection once in the beginning, and then all requests um, uh, look the same. Uh, they are executed in the same way. There's no difference. There's no different HTTP headers. There's no different requests. It's just a, an underlying connection. And this is kind of the philosophy that we've taken for designing the client, which is to um, create a unified interface or single interface for executing requests and to working with requests um, that is completely uh, decoupled and, and um, separate from the underlying protocol, whether that's HTTP or WebSocket. So mainly the way we de deal with uh, transport specific differences um, is that when you're creating the client, uh, uh, then you're dealing with the fact that it's over HTTP or over WebSocket or over RSocket. And you can set up some inputs for that. You can set up what the HTTP header should be. Uh, but for WebSocket, uh, you only set up the initial handshake um, headers. Um, and then after that, all requests uh, are basically relative to that original handshake. So there's no, there's no differences. Um, and, and that's pretty much what we've done with um, uh, the clients. I know you want to see, and, and I don't blame you because there's a lot here. There's the question of how we uh, build a client, how we do so in terms of these different protocols and so much more. And we've got very little time to waste. So let's dive right into it. We've looked at how to uh, talk to HTTP and how to uh, talk to RSocket using f familiar, well-known clients like curl and RSC. Uh, that said, you're going to eventually want to talk to GraphQL over these transports uh, via Java, and that's a very reasonable thing to do. Thankfully, Spring for GraphQL ships with a world-class uh, client, actually several of them, because there are specializations for WebSockets, for RSocket, and for HTTP. Uh, but you can work with them in terms of their core common interface, if you like. So let's go ahead and create a new project here called Clients, and we use Java 17. And of course, we're gonna use Spring Boot 2.7 RC1. We'll bring in the GraphQL support, and the Reactive Web support, and the RSocket support, and hit Generate. Now, obviously, in order for this to work, our HTTP-based GraphQL endpoint and our RSocket-based uh, endpoint need to be up and running. So I have already started them, right? We've we've written the code for that in previous installments. Uh, you just take that, just take the code from the uh, second one where we looked at queries, and from the RSocket one, and just do Maven clean spring hyphen boot colon run. Okay, that's in the GitHub repository. 
under github.com spring hyphen tips forward slash spring hyphen graphql hyphen redux and uh, you'll find it in the folder called live live okay so that's running in the background here we're going to act as a client to those two different services now in order for this to work we need actual client objects so let's configure them right first we need a bean that we can use to talk to the r socket graphql service okay so let's reduce this r socket graphql client r socket graphql client dot builder builder uh and we're going to say builder dot um tcp we need to specify the host and port on which is this is running so 127.0.01 and 191 and the route will be graphql and we'll build it okay so that's the graphql client for our socket and we want one for http so http graphql client uh http graphql client and here too we could inject a builder but we don't really need to we can just build it the old-fashioned way so HTTP graphql client that builder um and here if you wanted to pass in a pre-configured reactive web client you could uh in the same way you could also pass in our socket requester right you can actually specify how that works as well so i'm going to do a builder and uh, that's it i don't have to really do anything I, i suppose i can specify the base url so 127.0.01 uh, colon 880 forward slash GraphQL and then build. All right, good stuff. So there's our um, HTTP and our GraphQL client, our R socket client. Now let's just use them. This part's easy, right? We're, we're almost done. Uh, build an application runner just to test it out, right? So new application runner. And of course, uh, I'm going to inject both types. Now, like I said, this is a GraphQL client. This is an interface. And there are implementations of that, including HTTP, RSocket, uh, Web, and WebSocket, right? So use those if you like. Let's um, inject that here. So we want the RSocket GraphQL client, RSocket. We want the HTTP GraphQL client, HTTP. And we're going to send some requests. And here, you know, uh, Java's newfound multi-line strings prove invaluable. So HTTP request document equals, okay. And we're gonna send a query to that endpoint. Uh, and the endpoint is customer by ID. And we'll just say ID is one. Um, we're gonna read some data. So we want the ID and the name. All right, and I'm gonna use the HTTP client to send that request by specifying the document. That's this HTTP request document. We'll specify the path that we want. So we'll say retrieve, uh, you know, customer by ID. And we'll turn that into an entity of type customer. So I'll create a DTO here uh, to represent that data on the client side integer id string name okay customer dot class and uh and then we'll subscribe to that right so dot subscribe sprint outline good okay there's our http example let's uh start that just to see if that works Ah, port 8080 is already taken for. Yeah, it was spoken for. So let's do server at port equals zero and uh, restart. So again, because I'm running on the Apple M1, I have this nasty error that Netty couldn't load a native uh, uh, DNS resolver. That's okay. It works just fine without, as you can clearly see, because we got the result. It, it you know it degrades gracefully, uh, and we got our result. So that's worked just fine. Right, for HTTP. Now, what about our socket? Let's do another query, okay? Um, and this time, I'm gonna say our socket request document equals multi-line string. And we'll say we want to get a 
subscription. Okay. Greetings. Greeting. Alrighty, good stuff. And well then rsocket dot you know same basic use, right? Rsocket document. Uh, and then we're gonna retrieve a and this time we're gonna get the subscription, aren't we? We don't, we don't want to just get a single result. I want to get a subscription, so I'm gonna say greetings. And we're gonna turn that into entities of type customer. And then we'll subscribe. So system out print line. Oh, we don't, uh, oh sorry. We want to turn that into uh, greetings, not of type customer, of type greeting, right? Of course. So greeting, string greeting. Alrighty, and then we'll just uh, put that there. You can see it got 10 of them. It's just it didn't know how to convert them into the right type. How awkward. There we are. So it gave us the customer and it gave us the greetings, each with their different timestamps. So now we're able to work with that as a reactive stream. Right? If I didn't subscribe, then the result of this would be a flux of greeting, which is just a reactive ty uh, type. And I can use that uh, the way I would with any other reactive type. You know, I can send it back to my client. I can process it. I can whatever I want, right? In this video, We've looked at the programmatic Java clients that you can use for Java service-to-service -service invocations. Obviously, GraphQL is really all about building a better service layer for the client side. And there are any number of other clients, iOS, HTML5, Android, blah, 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 that will want to talk to your GraphQL endpoints. And there are any number of useful clients that you can use from these various platforms. It feels like there are a dozen implementations for JavaScript alone. The nice thing about GraphQL is that clients only need you to point them at the right endpoint and Assuming they speak the protocol you're using to communicate, the rest is just about finding the one method that you need to submit a GraphQL query. You don't worry about headers, about specific protocols, about specific aspects of the exchange. You just send a GraphQL request and get a response. Maybe, in the absolute worst case, you might have to contend with two functions or methods. One for the common case about which we just spoke for mutations and queries, and another specifically for the special case scenario of subscriptions, which is more of an ongoing long-lived streaming scenario. Either way, these two methods tend to be pretty similar. It's a good time to work on the client side, if you ask me. But how do you know that if your GraphQL client makes a request, it'll work? That's an age-old philosophical question, first posed, I think, by Socrates or Descartes, I forget. Either way, I think they were big fans of GraphQL, or they would have been. Something about the seamless integration of knowledge. And the, of course, and the answer, of course, here is that you don't know that. You need to prove it. And that's where testing comes in. We'll cover that in the next installment of, a, of this series, looking at Spring for GraphQL.